the ZF 5 HP 18 gearbox. This is the ZF 5 HP 18 gearbox. This is a do-it-yourself backyard setup. I've got two plastic bins in which you normally put a washing machine or a dryer. I've got a gearbox for my own car and I've got some tools to take it apart. Uh, some information on the 5 HP 18 gearbox. This is uh, the first uh, elect fully electronic gearbox released by ZF together with the 5 HP 30 which is its bigger brother. I think they developed it somewhere at the end of the 80s and it was available on BMWs at the, uh, in the early 90s. As I said, fully electronic, uh, not a complete clutch transmission. This transmission still has a brake band. As we dismantle the transmission, you will see the brake band. Pretty solid transmission, uh, has only a low torque rating of 310 newton meters, which is not that much. But in reality, I think it can handle up to 350 newton meters. Why do I think? This box can handle up to 350 newton meters. Very simple answer. The E36 M3 with the S six cylinder engine had this box fixed if you had a uh, fully automatic, and that engine delivers 350 newton meters of torque. Other engines this box is uh, combined with is the 3 liter V8 engine, every M50, M52 engine, and the uh, uh, 2.5 TDS diesel engine, the pump diesel. On all these engines, this gearbox is pretty okay. Uh, compared to the 5HP24 and 5HP19, it doesn't have those major issues where you have breakage in the drive line. It does, however, have an issue with the F drum, which is somewhere around here, uh, and some minor valve body issues. But nothing critical compared to the 5HP24, where you can actually lose reverse or lose your forward drive, or the 5HP19, its, uh, its, little, its little brother, where you can actually use reverse. Both of those transmissions have drum breakage trouble and that drum breakage trouble leads to you getting stranded with your car. We're going to take this transmission apart, some background information on this specific transmission. I had this transmission in my E34 530. I drove this transmission from 240,000 kilometers up to 300,000 kilometers when I bought the car at 240, up to 300,000. Uh, I took it from the car, I overhauled it completely, I fit all the updates that were available for this transmission, put it back into the car at let's say 300,000 kilometers, drove the car up to 480,000 kilometers and then I crashed the car. So um, the end of this transmission is, uh, the reason why this transmission here is not because it's broken, actually it was doing excellent uh, when I had the car at 480 kilometers, so was the engine, the M63 liter. But I crashed the car, I sold the car in parts, and I'm left with this transmission. So I figured, why don't we just take it apart, put it on video, put it on YouTube. The only thing you need to take this transmission apart is socket 10 for the bolts of the pan, socket 13 for the bolts on the tailpiece, and you need a T27 Torx 27 socket to get uh, the bolts removed of the pump housing. A very annoying part of this transmission is that it has that little T27 uh, on the front, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, where the 5HP24 uh, has uh, uh, bigger uh, socket bolts which you can easily use your uh, power tools on. If you use your power tools on those little uh, shitty torque bolts you're going to strip them and you're gonna, going to have to drill them out. So before we get started make sure you have those tools. Uh, I got my gloves ready because it's going to get a little bit oily. I kind of cheated because I've already took the torque, uh, the tension of the bolts of the pan of the till piece, uh, the torx bolts without any issue luckily and the bolts of the valve body, so I can dismantle this gearbox pretty quick. Uh, you may need some more time to carefully uh, take those bolts apart, but I hope I can help you getting this box apart and inspecting this box. With the box the other way around, we can take socket 13 and we can undo the, third, the bolts 13 millimeter on the rear. I'm not going to remove them entirely yet, I'm just going to loosen them a bit. I may, for whatever reason, want this tailpiece to be in position to, for whatever reason I may deem necessary, be able to more easily remove certain drums. So I'm just going to make sure I have the tension from these bolts. Just like that. And now I can take the tailpiece out whenever I want to. Second thing I'm going to do, I forgot to mention, you need a flat, a small flat screwdriver. You need to take the clip from the connector, which is right here. and. In a few minutes when we remove the valve body, we need to push that connector inside. So we're just going to put the clip right here, that's it. Now I'm ready to uh, start working on the front, so I'm going to turn the transmission around. And now you see why those, uh, those, uh, wash, those laundry mat uh, plastic uh, boxes are good for. You can just play with your transmission on your improvised workbench, on your 
shed and you don't need any professional tooling. Uh, first trouble with this transmission, not really a design problem, but more like an aging problem. Uh, all these little torque bolts, assuming your transmission did 300 something thousand miles over 20, 25 years, all of these bolts can be rusted shut. I recommend you use a lot of WD-40 on top of the bolt so it has the opportunity to creep inside and then gently with the small size socket on purpose so you don't use too much force you want to undo these bolts and whenever they uh, don't want to come loose you may want to tighten them or attempt to tighten them then attempt to loosen them and wiggle back and forth a bit until it snaps loose as I said before I cheated on you guys by already taking the tension off these bolts it should be absolutely no issue for them to remove them you can see that behind the bolts you have a, a, a little ring with some rubber, uh, it's called a uh, yeah, use it ring or something and they use it to seal the, uh, the pump plate right here because if you would just put in the bolts with normal washers you would actually get transmission fluid leak uh, all over the place. As you see me dismantling this kind of stuff, just to, just to let you know, everything, all the tools you see here are supermarket brand tools. It's the cheap tools. I do have some expensive uh, German tools, but I don't really use them for these YouTube projects. Just to show you guys that if you, if you use your brains, if you know what you're doing with tooling, and if you know how not to, uh, uh, how not to use tools, um, with which I mean that you shouldn't abuse them, the supermarket brand tools uh, that you can get today are actually quite useful when you're dealing with these backyard automotive projects. Now you'd normally say that with the final bolt coming out we would be able to remove the pump but we don't want to remove the pump. First we want to get rid of the pan and we want to get rid of the valve body. So I'm going to move these bolts out of the way in my second plastic box in which we will reconstruct the drive line in just a few minutes. Now with everything removed, with the tail piece loose, I want to flip the transmission over. You want to put the transmission on the top, you want to move the top to the bottom, then you want to remove the pan. But um, uh, for this YouTube movie this is not very useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the transmission on the side so you can see what I'm doing. This transmission should be close to 100 kilos filled with oil and its converter. So right now we're probably dealing with 70 to 80 kilos, but it's manageable. After I have removed the pan, I don't want the transmission to sit on the mating surface where you uh, put the pan and the gasket uh, on the transmission. So I'm just using uh, uh, wood right here under the transmission to support the transmission. I'm going to lift up that transmission like this. Sounds dangerous, but don't worry about it. And now with the transmission safely on the side, with uh, the pan totally free, I can remove the pan, remove the filter and remove the valve body. The pan is easily removed by using socket 10, removing the 10 millimeter bolts it has with those grabbers. As I told you before I cheated, so I already took the tension off these bolts, just to keep the YouTube movie sped up. I had this transmission sitting on its, uh, on its front side and on top for a few days, so I should have gotten rid of pretty much all of the oil. But there was always some oil left in the valve body and filter. I cannot use my extender, so with just the socket, I'm going to remove the final bolt. I'm 
going to support the pan with a finger because I don't want this pan to fall off. You will not have this problem since you put the transmission uh, with the top side down, the pan won't just fall off. Now we remove the pan, we put the pan in the second plastic box we have, and now you see uh, the valve body, part of the wiring harness, and you see the filter. First thing you're going to say is, no way your filter is still this clean. Trust me it is. I just took this transmission apart today to uh, undo the bolts for the YouTube movie. I saw the filter exactly in this shape. You can see a little bit of grime here and there, but you see a completely clean filter element inside of the plastic housing. I did nothing to this filter to keep it that clean. I do have to say though, after I uh, overhauled this transmission uh, six, seven years ago, I did do an oil and filter change every year. Uh, completely unnecessary to do it every year. I don't tow, I don't drive in any mountains. Here in the Netherlands you don't have any mountains. Uh, but I just do it because I like to do it uh, and I like to keep this transmission that I invested in in top shape. So, right, so to remove the filter, you need that uh, Torx 27 again. And you just remove these three bolts that you see holding the filter to the valve body. One tip on these filters, um, this is an original Filtron filter, that, that it, it's the brand ZF used and it's the, the, the brand BMW still sells, so whether you order it from ZF or BMW, you will get or you should get a uh, Filtron filter. There is also a brand called Fabi. There's many people who say that you should not use a Fabi filter but you should stick to a Filtron filter. From my own experience, the 5HP18 takes Fabi filters really well. The 5HP24 and the 5HP30 don't. For some reason, the 5HP24 and 5HP30 don't like Fabi filters and they want the original filter. But I have driven this gearbox after the rebuild with Fabi filters because I couldn't get my hands on a Filtron filter and it, it, did, it did just fine. No noise, no whining, uh, no, no oil starvation problems as far as I can tell uh, and it ran fine. Also on the full load. So for the 5HP18, I dare to say that Fabi filters are just fine. For the 5HP24 and 5HP30, I wouldn't use the Fabi filter, I would stick to the original Filtron filter. If this is the first time you are uh, overhauling a transmission yourself, you may be scared of what you're seeing right here. All the bolts, uh, all the, the little valve housings, uh, you may think, shit, what, uh, what did I get myself into? Um, to give you a hand on this, uh, ZF made it pretty easy to remove a valve body from a ZF 5HP gearbox, any 5HP gearbox, you need to undo the bigger Torx bolts. This is a small Torx uh, head, this is a big Torx head. If you undo the big Torx head, the valve body comes off. If you undo the small Torx head, you will actually disassemble the valve body itself. So the only thing you gotta do is identify the bigger Torx bolts remove the bigger Torx bolt and lift the valve body out of here. Before you work on uh, getting that valve body out of here, you should take a piece of cardboard, which you see right here. You uh, draw the valve body on this piece of cardboard. Sorry, I need to flip it over. You draw the valve body on this piece of cardboard. You put X's or marks wherever you have small Torx heads. You put holes with a screwdriver or whenever you have big Torx head. And as you take out the bolts, leaving only the final two bolts in the valve body, you put all the bolts in the holes that you pushed in with your screwdriver so that when you're assembling this gearbox again a few days later, you know exactly where you have to put each bolt. This is the safest way for uh, a backyard repair job like this to make sure every bolt goes in the right position. So with the piece of cardboard right here, First we're just going to take a look at what we see. This is the dreaded uh, 5 HP selector. The selector shafts tend to break. This is already an updated shaft, but if you uh, don't have this, uh, this grayish uh, rough, uh, uh, this grayish color with the rough surface, but you have a black uh, color with a very smooth surface, you still have the uh, first design which tends to break. So whenever you're working on this transmission, I always recommend you put in a new selector, which is pretty easy. Um, uh, also because uh, when this selector breaks you will get funny complaints. You will put the car in reverse, it will go into reverse. You put the car in drive, nothing happens. Or you put the car in reverse, nothing happens. You put the car in drive and it starts driving. This piston can cause all kinds of sm small complaints when it breaks because certain passages will stay blocked because of the broken piece of the piston staying inside where other passages will be opened up because of you being able to select certain passages by moving the other uh, side of the broken 
uh, piston outward. Okay, so I'm going to proceed uh, with removing the valve body. As I said before, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta uh, find the connector, which of course naturally is on the other side. So I'm going to flip over the valve body partially. And when I found the connector, the only thing I do is put my fingers on it. I'm going to push the connector inside. Since I have the gearbox already in this position, I'm just going to have to put it on its top side. Here we have the connector and firmly pushing the connector, we should be able There's two O-rings on this connector, which is why it's so sucked inside the bore right here. There is no twist or anything, you just need to pull on this connector to take it out. I'm going to leave it for later, let's just continue with the valve body, see if I can access the connector from the other side once I take out the valve body. With the valve body on the side again, I'm going to remove the bigger head bolts. And with the cardboard right here, I'm putting in the bolt exactly from where I removed it. This is a good valve body. I had this valve body measured by a specialist with the test, with the test bench. Basically what they do is they connect this valve body to a universal connector which uh, yeah, which knows this uh, valve body and the actuation of the solenoids. They put fluid pressure on it and they test if all the fluid pressures and pressure reduction works okay. If it works okay, your valve body checks out. If it doesn't work okay, you have an internal issue. But as this is a good valve body, I want to keep it. Maybe I will rebuild this transmission again just for YouTube purposes. Maybe not. And in that case, I want to be able to sell this valve body since it's uh, a good valve body. I'm going to take the uh, final bolts off supporting the valve body with my hand. I'm going to put my finger right here in the uh, pump suction. There is also a, um, uh, a connecting pin between the valve body and the gearbox to protect uh, the valve body from dropping out and to protect you from uh, uh, wrongly assembling the valve body somehow onto the gearbox housing. So with the final bolt removed, I'm going to carefully pull out the valve body. The, pist uh, the selector piston will automatically come out. There's a little notch here in which the piston grabs, but you can just pull it out. And with the valve body out like this, the, c the connector is the final part remaining on the inside. I'm taking a big flathead screwdriver and putting it behind the connector. Gently wiggling the connector to get some room on those rings. Hoping I can now push that connector inside, I cannot. I'm going to put the valve body back, I really need to put some more effort into this. Putting the tra transmission top side. <clears throat> there is no real trick to this. With the right amount of force that connector should pop in. But with new O-rings that are only a few years old, I guess it doesn't want to come out that easy. The ZF6HP gearbox series are actually known to leak from that area, but the 5HP generally don't have a problem like that. I'm prying it out millimeter by millimeter. Here it comes. Yep, yeah, that was it. I got the O-rings past the bore. That's it, I got it out. So here we have our connector. I'm going to loosely put the valve body back in. Uh, as I said, this is a good valve body. and uh, This is a backyard repair job, so I want to protect it against the elements. I've got a big plastic case ready, which I cleaned on the inside. I'm going to drop the valve body in the case immediately. And uh, when we're further into this uh, process of repair, we're gonna take a, a valve body apart and uh, take a look what the 5 hp 18 valve body looks like. I actually have the gearbox positioned the way you should have. The only thing you do is very simple, you put your hands under the valve body, you lift out the entire valve body, and you put it away in some 
uh, uh, some kind of protection to protect it from the elements. All right, I'm going to put the transmission on the side again. Let's identify some uh, components. Here you have the parking mechanism. When you engage the parking mechanism, you are moving a notch into a gear, uh, preventing the transmission from moving. This is the brake band uh, actuator. Right behind this metal plate, you have a, a pin with a spring that engages the brake band, which you see here. When fluid pressure is removed, the spring moves back, so the, uh, the, gear, um, the brake band uh, loses tension again. You have the, uh, uh, the DG drum uh, to uh, torx bolts that keep the DG drum, the center support, in place. You see already see some drums right here. Uh, you can see the, the beginning of the Simpson set on the back right here. You can see some steel plates of the clutch pack right here. Other than that, you see the holes the valve body uses to put pressure on uh, uh, the gearbox clutches and to lubricate everything. Other than that, we don't see anything really interesting right here. I'm going to take the right torque socket, uh, lose the tension. I'm only going to uh, drop tension on these bolts. Then we're going to proceed by removing the entire drive line right here into the second plastic container. Before I proceed, uh, not to forget, we took the valve body out. Here you see my, uh, uh, my piece of cardboard with all the uh, locations of the bolts uh, punched in. Here you see the big head torx bolts. Uh, if you work this way in your backyard, you basically uh, cannot go wrong when you're reinstalling your valve body. I'm going to put this piece of cardboard with the bolts in the box where I have the valve body so I don't lose anything. Uh, then I'm going to proceed with the gearbox. Alright, with a T50 bit from, a no from another German supermarket brand on a large bar, we are going to take the tension off the torch bolt. I got the first one, second one. Second one coming too. We're in luck today. Third one. Third one appears to be very loose. Okay. And need I to remind you that I did over torque these bolts when I assembled this transmission years ago. So that's inter interesting to know that it was pretty loose. Maybe next time if I really want to build a transmission to last few years, I can maybe even put some thread locker on it. For now, I'm just going to loosen them up. I don't want to remove them yet because as I start pulling out drivetrain uh, components, I want the DG drum to stay in place. I only want the DG, the DG drum coming out when I want to, not when it wants to come out itself. Uh, I need to clean up the workbench a little bit. I need to empty this plastic bin because as we deconstruct the transmission, as we remove driveline components, we're going to put them in the right order right here in the second plastic bin. reason for this is Especially if this is your first transmission, uh, you cannot really go wrong on the drums because there's only one way you can fit those drums in. But you can actually go wrong on how you put the needle bearings on the drums. So to make sure uh, you put the needle bearings, also called thrust bearings, in the, the right position, we're going to rebuild the entire drive line in this plastic bin. So that as you are overhauling piece by piece by putting in new uh, piston rings uh, or new molded pistons, new clutch pack packs, you can just start rebuilding the transmission as you go. That's not okay, actually uh, the actual disassembly of the 5HP18 transmission, first we need to get the pump out. Annoying part about this pump, it has an O-ring. Uh, the O-ring keeps the pump, uh, the edge right here sealed, but it also keeps the pump nicely inside, even when you have the bolts removed. Trick is to put two pliers with good grip on the grooves and to just pull it out with whatever comes with it. Uh, another trick is you take a very thin flathead screwdriver, you put it in over the brake band, gently, you will feel you're punching into something that's actually uh, the plate of the pump and with your hand right here to support the housing a little bit you push with the flat head until you feel you've got the pump coming out <sighs> I'm going to assist myself a little bit with some pliers here Take the pump out of the transmission. With the pump we see the first clutch pack and we see a thrust bearing right here. Keep the thrust bearing together. Just put the entire pump with the first clutch pack and the thrust bearing in your second plastic box. Now you see why I have those plastic boxes. As I disassemble this transmission piece by piece, I will put it piece by piece back together right here in the second plastic box. 
So, uh, especially if this is the first time you're doing one of those automatic transmissions, you can always uh, backtrack the steps you took because you're reassembling the transmission right here. And as you use a toothbrush and a greaser to clean the entire gearbox housing so it looks perfectly new, you have your drive line all together sitting here ready uh, while you're waiting on parts uh, to be overhauled and to be installed again. Now, most important part right now is to look at this one-way roller clutch. Uh, this is a one-way uh, wheel. There's a sprag bearing inside, which means the bearing can spin in one direction and it blocks in the other direction. If you put this bearing in the other way, you're going to lose a gear because the, the car is going to bind up in third or fourth or something gear. So, looking at the sprag bearing from the input shaft position, it turns counterclockwise, it blocks clockwise. Again, it turns counterclockwise, it blocks clockwise. So this is how you, this is how you need to put that bearing in. We take the bearing out. This, uh, I did not replace this bearing uh, six, seven years ago when I overhauled this transmission. So this bearing has been uh, in use uh, ever since this transmission was put together in the factory, which means it has done almost 500,000 kilometers. I don't see any damage on the teeth of the bearing. Uh, I don't feel any damage when I spin the bearing. You can take the bearing apart and inspect it, but make sure you put it back uh, the right way uh, and that you put it in the right way. So again, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, the bearing spins. Clockwise, the bearing blocks. We're going to put the bearing on the back of the pump so we keep things nice, nicely together. And now we are going to remove the drum, the brake band and the input shaft. Putting my hand on the, uh, on the tooth right here of the drum, I can carefully move out the drum out of the brake band and take it out. On the other side of the drum we see one part of the needle bearing, the other part of the needle bearing right there on the other part. So I'm going to put the drum on the pump and the bearing, the roller bearing that I just took out of the transmission and I want it to slide in the clutch plates so I have it in the proper way. Then I'm going to take out the other part of the truss bearing. I'm going to put it on top of where it should be. And carefully. Now you see me holding the, the pump here with the, the big steel drum on it. With one hand uh, right here on the, the shaft and the other hand you can twist it. And you want to ge gently lift it only by like a millimeter. Then twist it to make sure that the teeth properly fall into the, uh, into the clutch grooves until you hear it sit flush. I'm going to take it a bit upward, spin again until it drops in. That's it. You heard the click. This is exactly the way it should be and I'm going to put it down right here in that plastic box. Now gently I'm going to pull on that input shaft taking the input shaft and the drum out. Remember there was a bearing right here, the bearing is, we put the bearing right here on the drum so we still have that bearing actually. On this input shaft you see you have a big drum and a small drum. To get them apart you can use your hand, you just tap on the drum and you move the drum over an o-ring. We, uh, we don't want to keep them apart, we want to keep them together so I'm just going to put them back in. You will have a new o-ring in your seal kit so don't worry about that o-ring. There's this very small uh, thrust bearing right here. We're going to take that, uh, first we'll take the brake band out, just to get it out of our way. We're going to put the brake band aside. You cannot go wrong with the brake band because there's only one brake band. We're going to take the plate of the thrust bearing, we're going to put it back the way it came out. We're going to keep these two drums together because they sit together nicely. We're going to put them in the second plastic box. We're going to make some space here. Now we're going to take uh, the steel drum with the two drums on the inside. As you can see you don't even need any kind of force, you just gently pull them out. We already have the gear of the gear set coming out, but we're gonna, we're gonna put that gear back in the planetary gear set.
This is actually an assembly of drums with no clutches. There is a small shaft here. On it there is a drum with no clutch but uh, with a bearing. When we take it out we see another truss bearing. When we take that intermediate piece out we see another truss bearing. So we have a drum with a truss bearing. Inside goes a smaller drum with gears on it with a truss bearing. Inside goes an even smaller drum with a truss bearing. So make sure you keep everything together. And as you remember we actually had that input shaft with that big drum sitting inside. So we can now slot them in together carefully. Again with the trick that you want to spin, lift, spin, lift. Maybe the other way around is easier because we need to lift we need to put this drum in clutch plates and after we put this drum in the clutch plates we need to put the other uh, the gearing of the drum over this intermediate drum so right now you just heard that I've got my drum in position I'm going to take that final drum put it over the drum you see here and we're going to put this assembly aside it doesn't matter that's a bit loose, it's just to make sure we don't lose any order of thrust bearings and uh, drums. Now we gently take the planetary gear set out. I didn't do any preparation on this, it just comes out this easy, it's normal. Uh, we have the little gear right here. We have a thrust bearing on the other side and there's actually... You, right uh, here you have uh, like a, uh, a ring around it. We're going to put this right here behind the other uh, combination of pieces that we took out. We want the other side of the truss bearing to come out to keep it uh, in, to keep that truss bearing together. Now mind you, this truss bearing actually has an edge and the edge goes inside the DG drum. So the flat side should be looking outward on which you put the other side of the truss bearing. Now we want to remove the DG drum. Um, remember it had these three bolts which I will now remove manually. We should be able to get the DG drum out manually but it may be a little bit stuck. No it's not, it's coming out without any issues. That's good, it's taking the F drum, it's taking the F drum with him. So if we're careful we can keep the DG and the F drum together. Yes we can. I'm going to put it on the F-drum. Remember we had that uh, truss bearing right here but we already put the truss bearing in the position. We are going to lift the DG drum from the F-drum. And the F-drum is very important, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, the truss bearing is supposed to be right here on the Simpson, so we're going to put that truss bearing back. Uh, here we have the dreaded DG drum, uh, but before we, uh, before we chat on the DG drum, I want to have a little chat on the F drum. This is a new F drum. When I, um, when I rebuilt this transmission, I bought this new F drum. The reason for this is, uh, the old F drum that came from this transmission had all kinds of wear on the teeth. And you can see that after not even 200,000 kilometers, this F drum also already has some wear on the teeth that you see here. It is almost as if the... Uh, clutch plates of the DG drum are eating away at uh, uh, the machined uh, teeth surface that you see right here on the F drum. I have no explanation for this. I, uh, uh, when I uh, did this transmission 6-7 years ago, I also had a transmission from a 520i, which is a 2 liter 6 cylinder with only 190 newton meters. So that's like a really weak engine compared to the 350 tops this uh, gearbox can take. But even that transmission had wear on the teeth of the F drum. So the F drum is not a really strong component. Uh, also the F drum, uh, especially on the early transmissions, the F drum is known to fail. The F drum has a, a silly design flaw that causes the drum to fail and it causes you to have uh, shift complaints. Uh, right here on the inside of the F drum you see a bushing which is the bearing. This, bear this bearing is uh, permanently lubricated be because of all the lubrication that takes place inside the transmission. and. Um, to keep the, the bearings in place, they added a snap ring right here. But the earlier models of the 5HP18, let's say, uh, I can't say for sure, but let's say uh, 1990 to 1993 something, they had a somewhat different design right here. And what would actually happen is uh, the bushing could get loose or the bushing could wear out easy. 
uh, easily and uh, if so when your transmission would heat up uh, ha on, on normal operating temperature you could actually get fluid leaks uh, causing you to have all kinds of shift complaints when you had to when your transmission had to actuate the clutches uh, uh, around this area because of the leak it could not hold proper pressure and this causes you to have all kinds of shift complaints uh, we don't have that problem with this drum anymore this is the updated design which is also fit to the 5 hp 19 I wouldn't say it's actually foolproof now. The only thing I'm going to say is you won't have that complaint as much as you would have when you had, uh, if you'd have uh, an early 5HP18 uh, edition. So uh, if you see uh, worn out teeth right here or if you uh, see the old uh, style bearing right here, I recommend you just buy a new F drum. Uh, uh, sorry for the money, but you don't want to put this back in your transmission uh, if it's not in good shape. That having said, we're going to put the F drum away. The Dread DG drum on the 5HP18, this is a pretty solid drum with no issue. It also has a, uh, a, a, roller, a roller clutch inside. So with the DG drum in this position and the brown ring facing towards you, uh, the big diameter uh, drum side facing towards you, you see that the inner part wants to move clockwise and you see it wants to block counterclockwise. So it's the other way compared to what I just showed you with the front roller. You can move clockwise, but you want to block counterclockwise so in the next part of this movie when we're taking this drum apart uh, when we assemble it we need to make sure we put that bearing in the right position um, one of these clutches is actually the reverse clutch and on the 5 HP 19 uh, they are known to uh, to blow the drum uh, on the reverse because of uh, an error in the valve body causing uh, high pressure on the reverse drum uh, pushing the reverse uh, clutch I'm using this clutch as an example pushing the reverse clutch so hard against the snap ring that it actually punches through the teeth, making the clutch useless and you as a user of the car losing your reverse. The 5HP18 does not really have this issue. You will not find a 5HP18 with normal wear that blows out drums. The 5HP18 is known that it doesn't blow its drums, unless of course you have a very unique situation. So that having said, we put the DG drum uh, away. I'm going to put the F drum in the DG drum, just to keep things together. And uh, we are almost ready to remove the final pieces. First thing we're going to do is do a good pull on the Simpson set. Simpson set is coming out. Uh, the outside of the Simpson ha set has a bearing with a cap. The cap is pointed forward. Uh, the, the, the metal uh, backing plate is pointing towards the rear. On the inside it also has a uh, bearing with a cap. In this uh, situation the cap is mounted like this. We take out the other parts of the needle bearing, the thrust bearing. We pull gently on the uh, Simpson gear train, which also has our parking wheel on it. We want to put the Simpson set back together. I've got my glove in sticking in between, so just give me a minute here. We put the Simpson set back together. You can actually see the Simpson set operating right here. Trust bearing right here, we have a trust bearing inside. Right here we have the spacer ring to correct for end play. Uh, whenever you replace drums or whenever you have wear and tear on uh, surfaces like this, your drums and your gears can actually move uh, a bit towards each other and you need to correct for end play. On your backyard rebuild, I wouldn't worry so much about end play. Uh, I didn't correct the end play on this transmission and it did fine for almost 200,000 kilometers. So, putting the Simpson set aside, the only thing left we have is the tailpiece. If you look inside the transmission, you see that we have the tailpiece left. Um, removing that tailpiece is pretty easy. I can put the transmission safely uh, on its uh, on top, uh, top side right now. We take that 10 millimeter, no, sorry, 13 millimeter socket that I told you guys to have laying around. I already took tension off the tailpiece.
All right, with the bolts removed, uh, the top piece is also held in the housing with an O-ring, but generally this one is uh, somewhat easier to remove. As you can see, just using my hands, I'm able to pull it out. You see the top piece right here. Uh, another interesting part, there is a big ball bearing right here. I did not replace this ball bearing, so this ball bearing is also 480,000 kilometers old. Made no noises at all. We have no play on the shaft whatsoever. So I dare to say, even though this, um, uh, uh, this end piece was used on the 3 liter M60, which is one of the strongest uh, uh, applications, I dare to say that this can last us another 100,000 kilometers. I see no play, I don't see any damage, I don't see any scorching or heat marks. I dare, uh, I dare, I can reuse the, I, I think I can reuse this bearing without any issue. So, um, we're going to put the tail piece right here on the shaft stub where it's normally connected. And this is basically, this is basically a complete uh, dismantling of the 5HP 18 gearbox. We now have an empty housing. I'm going to use a toothbrush and degreaser to clean uh, the gearbox housing completely. Um, I, may, I may actually overhaul the transmission and put it back together. I'm going to order new seals anyway because I've taken uh, O-rings and uh, seals apart. So I need to renew those. Uh, and uh, I'm not, not really sure what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just rebuild the entire transmission, maybe partially. Uh, but it feels like a waste to toss it away. This is a V8 model transmission. They're quite rare on your second-hand websites. The six-cylinder models are very common. They have a different bell housing. Uh, and who knows, maybe one day I'll need it if I have another 3-liter V8 in my collection. Maybe I don't, and I'll just uh, scrap it in a year. I don't know yet. The next video I'm going to make about this transmission, I'm going to make it this week. It's February 2023. will be about uh, taking all the drums apart, inspecting the clutches, to give you a little sneak peek of what we're going to be uh, doing, I'm just going to remove a snap ring right here. I just want to see what this clutch looks like because I have actually didn't check them out and I've, I've done almost uh, 200 kilometers on this transmission. I've rebuilt it myself. So removing that snap ring, we are able to remove the stack of uh, uh, friction and steels. And taking this uh, clutch plate out, looking at the clutch plate, remember about 180,000 kilometers of uh, highway kilometers of frequent oil changes, you can still see the numbering of the clutch plate. Let me put it closer to the camera. You can still, still see the numbers of the clutch plate which they put in on the factory when they cut them uh, on the friction material. Even though there's oil on it, when I feel my fingers, I still feel good friction material. So I'm happy to see that the rebuild I did so many years ago actually turned out great because as I dismantle this clutch plate I see everything is still in pretty good shape and this is a frequently used clutch plate by the uh, transmission this is not just a silly uh, a reverse clutch this is uh, actually uh, a forward clutch and I see very clean I see the very clean piston I see a very uh, very clean inside of the drum uh, clean steels clean and friction with uh, good material I probably don't even have to renew these frictions if I want to put the transmission back together, but since the friction kit for the 5HP18 is not that expensive, if I decide to put this transmission back together, I'm definitely going to put in new frictions. So whoever is going to run this transmission, either me or somebody else, is going to enjoy a fresh, a fresh set of frictions. Um, with the final plate back together, I put the snap ring back in. Sometimes there may actually be a specific position to put the snap ring in, but often it doesn't really matter where you have the open end of the snap ring. Checking with the screwdriver if the snap ring is in position, and it is. So I'll see you guys in a few days. Part 2 of this transmission is going to be uh, uh, inspection of all the parts more thoroughly. Uh, and if I have my hand press right here, I can actually also remove the... Uh, the springs that hold the pistons in place and we can completely deconstruct every drum and every piston. I hope you uh, learned from this movie. If you got any question on this transmission just post in the comments or send me a message over YouTube. If I read the message I will reply. Um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert at this but uh, I've gotten pretty far into this specific transmission and it's bigger brothers the 24 and the 30. So see you next time.